Acts chapter 9, verse 6. Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? Luke is the author of Acts, and he was concerned about how people responded to the gospel, to the message of hope. He paid special attention uh, to the message and to the response. And indeed, as uh, humanity encounters divinity, it induces a reaction. The human heart cannot stay the same once it encounters a divine God. And something happens. A, a transformation uh, is, it begins. And Luke, uh, he notes that. Even in, even in the book of Acts here, he notes it a few times. Uh, in Acts, I believe it's chapter 3, after Peter's sermon, the question uh, is asked. They marveled at, at Peter's uh, preaching, and they said, what shall we do? What shall we do? And, and Luke goes on and, and, uh, and gives, provides account of what Peter said. And Peter said, you should repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, for the promise is unto you and to your children, and to all that are afar are far off, even as many as the Lord our God has called. So Luke here, uh, he, he records Peter's sermon. And he records uh, the gospel message going out. And the response to that message. And the response to that question the, question. the question being, what shall we do with what we have heard? And Peter uh, explained that they should repent. That they should be baptized, everyone, and and it's and it's the same uh, in this age. We should repent, we should turn away from ourselves and and look to God. Later in the book of Acts, I believe it is chapter sixteen, we see Lydia who receives the gospel, and it says that she attended. Uh, the word of God. She attended what had been told to her. So she responded. She made note of what was said and, and, and responded in an in, in, in appropriate fashion. We also see in the same chapter uh, the Philippian jailer. And he says, what must I do to be saved? What shall we do? Well, uh, we, we remember how, uh, how Paul how he goes to the, the jailer's house and he uh, and his family believe and are saved. But Luke no, doesn't just uh, record that in Acts, even in, in his gospel. He makes a few, a few notes about how we should respond uh, to this life-changing message he talks in uh, Luke 3 uh, about John uh, the Baptist. And John the Baptist is, is preaching in the wilderness. And he's preaching a message of repentance uh, and remission of sins. And again, uh, the people hear him. And they say, what shall we do with what we've heard? You know, there's something stirring within me. I, I see uh, who I am. I accept this message of hope that you are preaching to me, but what do I do to experience it and to live it? Let him impart, uh, the baptizer says, let him impart to him that hath none. Give. Give to the, to the person who is poor. Give to the person who... Uh, is without food. Give, impart upon him. The publicans, uh, they, they came to be baptized. And they said, Master, what shall we do? We've heard your message. We've seen what it can do. We've seen the power of God. Something is different about this. How do I experience it? What do I do? He says, Exact no more 
than that which is appointed you. So this is for the publicans, the tax collectors, who were notorious for uh, embezzling or, or marking up uh, the, the taxes owed to, uh, to the Roman government, and they would skim off of the top, right? And they would pocket a good portion of that, and they would become very wealthy, and then they would, they would pass uh, that, the money that belonged to Rome onto Rome uh, only after making a, a handsome profit for themselves. And Jesus said, well, if you, or sorry, John the Baptist said, well, if you want to experience this, you need to repent, you need to be baptized, and you need to stop stealing, right? The soldiers, they likewise, they came to be baptized by John. And they said, what shall we do? What shall we do? We like what we have heard. We believe in what, in what you're saying. It's, it's a compelling message that a deliverer can save us from our sins, can redeem the broken heart, can set the captive free. What do we do? The baptizer says, do violence to no man, neither accuse any falsely. So the, the soldiers in that time, we see a little picture about who they were. Uh, they were violent people. That's how they enforced the laws of the land. Uh, by instilling fear and abusing those uh, that had no power and no rights. And they did violence. And they would accuse people of doing things. And, and what is in, implied here is that they were accusing people falsely. They were, they were creating this environment of fear, and that is how they would rule. That would, that's how they would engender uh, complicity to the law. John the Baptist, he says, don't do violence. Do no violence. Don't accuse falsely. He goes on to say also, evidently they were discontented uh, people. Uh, and he said, be content with your wages as well. So we see some things here that we can do. What shall we do? Well, here in Acts chapter 9, we see Saul. And Saul, who, he thought he was a righteous man. He thought he was a good man. Right? He was doing uh, the Lord's work. Or so he thought. And he was walking uh, in the middle of the day. His path was illuminated. He knew where he was going. But nevertheless, a light shone down from heaven. And it had such a profound impact on him. You know, like, like physically. And physiologically, that, that it impaired him. This light from heaven, it shone upon him. In the physical sense, it blinded him. But in the spiritual sense, it illuminated him. It actually provided uh, a, a spiritual vision for him that he lacked uh, heretofore. And so he journeys and he's, and he's uh, persecuting the, this new sect of Christians, abusing them, stoning them, uh, imprisoning them. What he failed to realize was that these were the Lord's anointed messengers. And the Lord shone down from heaven. Uh, and and in, a, in a miraculous way, uh, and for the first time, Paul experienced divinity. He experienced deity in his human nature. And it was humbling. And Paul, Saul at that time, was, had no reason to be humble. You read uh, how he carried himself and how he projected himself. And he didn't seem to be a humble man. But here he is, humbled by God. You know, when, when we have an encounter with a holy God, we are left speechless. We are, are left uh, simply with this question of, Lord, what would you have me to do? What, what I see who I am. 
through your eyes. You have illuminated me. You show me where I am in proximity to you. I cannot save myself. You know, Luke, he doesn't record any of that language. Like, okay, these people, they, they got this good lesson. They got this good teaching. And with this, te- they read this good book. And with this new wisdom and with this new knowledge, they were able to improve their position in life. You don't see that in Luke. He, he takes a different route. And it's, and it's a recognition that people could not save themselves. What can I do? I, I can't earn this salvation. I, I see how unclean I am, how filthy I am in your eyes. What can I do? Well, the immediate response here was, was that he was to go to a house and, and uh, he was blinded, and, the, and he would have somebody who would help him. Uh, but a few verses down, we see that Paul, uh, verse 15 of chapter 9, the book of Acts, Paul is a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name. Oh, you are a chosen vessel. You are God's chosen vessel. That's what we are called to do and what we are called to be. God's vessel. A place where his spirit can abide. Where his spirit can work on us and through us. That we would bear the name of Christ. That we would be Christians. That we would be Christians. That's what we can do. That we would bear his name before the world, before the Gentiles, before kings, and the children of Israel. That's what we are called to do. That's what we can do. That is the answer to the question. Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? The Lord would have you be a vessel. A vessel unto honor. He goes on to say, uh, he must suffer For my name's sake. So Paul was going to suffer. What wilt thou have me to do, Lord? The Lord would have you to suffer. You know, we've heard and we've experienced a lot of challenges in 2022 and in the years leading up to 22. That's not in vain. The the challenges that we face, the adversity, the affliction that we go through, Uh, The trial of our faith, it's not in vain. It's right here in the word of God. We must suffer for Christ's name's sake. Oh, what wilt thou have me to do? That we would be a vessel unto God. And that we would suffer for his name's sake. Oh, that we would honor God. You know, the, the word of uh, this, this lesson is, in the word of God, it, it comes to us again and again and again in, in life. And sometimes if we, don't, if we don't pick up what the Lord is, is trying to tell us or trying to teach us the first time, he provides another lesson, doesn't he? And he comes around uh, again and again. And sometimes we ask ourselves throughout our Christian walk, throughout our our, our Christian journey. Lord, what wilt thou have me to do in this situation? Or or what wilt thou have me to do in this season of life? Or what wilt thou have me to do in in my profession or in my work today? And and sometimes we wonder, uh, am I I doing this in vain? Or, Or is this where I'm supposed to be? Is this what I'm supposed to be doing? Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? Just be a vessel. Just honor him live uh, bear his name in your place of work in your home with your kids uh, at school suffer for him be afflicted uh, for him but we see that this message is cyclical and it comes around and around uh, and and we see in Isaiah uh, chapter 55 uh, some, some 
just beautiful words. Ho, everyone that is thirsty, come ye to the waters. Come ye to the waters, and he hath no money. Come ye, buy and eat. Yea, come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. He goes on to say, uh, incline your ear and come unto me. Hear, and your soul shall live. What wilt thou have me to do, Lord? Listen, he says, time and time again in scriptures. Hearken unto me, hear. He that hath ears, let him hear. Come near to me, incline your ear. Attend, kind of like Lydia, attend unto my word. Verse 6, seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way, and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return unto the Lord, and he will have mercy upon him. Verse 8, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as, as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my, my ways higher than your ways. And my thoughts than your thoughts. What wilt thou have me to do, Lord? We, we can't know the mind of God. We live each day as it, as it is set before us. And we don't always know how the Lord works. You know, he brings people into our life. He brings circumstances into our life. And we don't always know what he is doing. Oh, but that we would uh, understand that he has a plan, that he is working uh, through us and in us uh, despite these, these challenges. For uh, as the rain cometh, verse 10, as the rain cometh down and the snow from heaven and returneth not thither, but watereth the earth and maketh it bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower and the bread to the eater. You know, the, the, the weather, the snows of winter, the rains of spring, the, the sun of, of summer, it's cyclical. It comes around and around and around. So God's word is cast forth. So his promise of hope, so his message of redemption goes forth again and again and again, looking for hearts that are seeking him. That are asking, Lord, I've heard your message. What wilt thou have me to do? Here comes the call again. Just like the snows from heaven. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereunto I send it. Oh, that we would hearken unto the Lord, that we would listen to his spirit. You know, in, in John, he says, my spirit uh, is, is what quickens. It gives life. It is life. Oh, that we would listen to that spirit, that we would be compelled uh, by the message that we've heard, that it would transform us. The word of God uh, induces a reaction and produces fruit. It doesn't return unto him void. Here we are embarking upon another year. Oh, that we would uh, ask the Lord again, and a new Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? Who wilt thou have me to be for your kingdom and for your glory? We have a song, uh, 267, the altars are open for prayer.